This is Duke University. Tell us your path to becoming a judge. Tell us how did you become Judge Webster? When did I decide to become a lawyer, first of all? And I said, oh, about the eighth and ninth grade. He says, you're lying. You couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't have known that early in your, career, your life. And I said, yes, I decided that I wanted to be a lawyer. I had read about uh, Thurgood Marshall and others involved in the civil rights struggle and, and so decided that uh, that might be my way to making a difference. And that's really what I sought to do for al almost four decades now. That's wonderful. So tell us uh, what, what, where in this uh, path uh, in writing about Judge Chess, what stood out most to you? If you, when, if you met him, you would know that his life is just very, very interesting. And so um, uh, this book really arises out of a thesis that I did here at Duke University uh, as I worked on my LLM, um, LLM program that they have for judges here. And um, just a number of people uh, thought it was good and said, you know, you need to publish it. And so that's what I did. And so he went to North Carolina Central. Um, I believe it was in 1952, and uh, which was um, at that time all of the schools in North Carolina, uh, if it was a, what we called a white school back then, African Americans could not uh, get into those schools. So uh, he was limited in where he could go to school because of his of his race. And I guess because so much, so many things in the environment were separated and segregated, and there was so much racism in society, civil rights seemed a very important cause to him. Well, I, I think that um, Judge Chess, like myself, just feel this, we have this calling, this need to try to make a difference. And of course, um, um, at that time, I mean, there was, certainly was a need because people were uh, being arrested for uh, trespass. And as he would say, a, a black man could be arrested even for spitting on the sidewalk or something. And so, um, he he wanted to make a difference. I mean, from the be from the beginning, and he believed in the Constitution. He believed in equal justice under law, and he just tried to do all that he could. Um, so he he uh, just felt had this calling to uh, make a difference. Although, as we lost Dr. King, uh, several other people, I'm sure he felt some thought that his life may be at, at, at risk as well? That, that is true. Um, he took note of why, whether he should or should not continue. He counted the cost, so to speak, and he knew that his family could also be, he made the decision that I, he was going to continue down the path that he was doing, which was to represent many uh, who had been discriminated against, and that as a result of that, uh, he no longer feared death. Amazing. So from civil rights to judge, what was yes. that path? So he told the governor, he said, Governor, um, there are a lot of reasons why you want to appoint the first African-American Superior Court judge. And he said that um, the best reason, the, the, the one reason I want to talk with you about because it is the right thing to do. And so in November of, it turns out that in November of uh, that same year, 1971, he appointed um, Sammy Chess Jr. as the first African-American uh, judge. Uh, what I've, one of the things that I've learned from the book and in learning and reading about others is that you don't have to be uh, a person who is, uh, I don't know how I would put it, weak-minded or, or you, 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 you can be courageous and you can fight the system, mm -hmm. make things right, and then still um, achieve great things. And so I think he did that, and I've been uh, trying to stay on his shoulders all of my career. You also have a first, an African-American first as well yourself. Well, um, well I was one of the first African-American to go practice in my hometown, which it was for, founded in 1818. In fact, I don't think any other... African Americans have um, have gone to practice law there, uh, but also first African American United States Magistrate Judge for the Middle District of North Carolina. So um, throughout the 60s, when he was representing thousands charged with trespass and other 
violations. Um, and, and all of this, uh, you know, much of it taking place when walking distance from his um, office there. Um, if you could just imagine the, the water hoses and the vicious dogs and billy clubs being wielded by racist police officers caused many injuries and deaths. And I was uh, reading a newspaper article and it said that, um, that after this large demonstration that many were being held in the local jails without charge. And I, reading that, thought about Guantanamo Bay and where the 9-11 defendants are being held today. Um, we, when we talked, he talked about the four little girls in Birmingham being blown up on a, at Sunday school. And I mentioned that and I, you know, we always, when you write something, you always wish maybe that you'd written something else. And I wish that I had uh, written their names uh, because they were somebody special. Um, but I know, and all of us know, that their deaths are not in vain. Uh, Chess was the visible attorney in the lawsuit brought against the High Point Board of Education to se desegregate the public schools there. He, he while he um, did not agree with the views of the Black Panther Party, he, he represented some of the Black Panthers because he, uh, he like me, believes that Everybody is entitled to uh, zealous representation. I think his, uh, Ch Judge Chess's legacy will um, in include an affirmation that he did much to bring about ra racial reconciliation in a yet still badly divided America. Um, I also ask him, you know, how, how could he have not been affected by this segregated world that he grew up in? And he said that um, I was unaffected by the segregated world in which I grew up because I lived in a village. I was surrounded by hardworking and God-fearing folk. And when I was talking to him about uh, being fair and impartial and how could he do that in spite of what he'd been through, he said, uh, you treat people the way you want to be treated, not the way you are treated. He said, I didn't let them set my standards. As I said earlier, if a Klan member can bring you to this level, then you're not well rooted. He also um, was interviewed in, in the newspaper, and it says, uh, what I think this country needs is for us to move away from this black and white thing. I think the young people are ready to put race and religion behind them in dealing with public problems. But regrettably, we still have some high positions that continue to expose young people to this sort of thing. They keep redirecting this evil prejudice and thus delaying a day of a brighter sunshine. Um, so you see, he was. Um, um, a man before his time. He, he was. He was. And if there were any law students here today, I, he would say to them that a good name is so very important. And he said that young lawyers should search their hearts and ask why they want to become lawyers. He says, first and foremost, they should know that the law is a profession. It is not a traditional business. The key ingredient to becoming a great trial lawyer is preparation, preparation, preparation. And lastly, I want to say before taking the questions is that uh, Judge Sammy Chess Jr. was a great judge and man because he chose to serve. He chose to serve at a time in our history where a man of courage, grace, determination, and strength of character was needed. Chess has selfishly given of himself for the benefit of man, humankind. And this is the making of the man who would become a giant among lawyers and then judges. And I concluded that one cannot measure the judge without measuring the man. He could have, could have had a much easier life, one where he would have had, or could have had a steady paycheck and fewer headaches. But his uh, road to the top, to success, was filled with hardship, obstacles, prejudice, sacrifice, and danger. Rather than choosing a more comfortable career path, 
to use um, Chess's own words, he, quote, chose the road that leads to Calvary instead. So are there any, do you have more questions of me or are there questions from the audience? Any comments on the protests around the college campuses and, and around the country? Everyone has the right. I once participated in a, well, more than once, a protest, protest one, one, one at Howard University and one when I came back to practice law in my, in my hometown. And you know, there are some um, wrongs, so some issues that need to be brought to light, and sometimes that's the best way to do that. I mean, I, I'm certainly in favor completely, as Dr. King, of, of uh, peaceful protests. They have a constitutional right to do that. And so um, I'm, I, I, I believe that I can say that. And, and I'm just, uh, am I fearful of saying that? I don't, you may have had something else in mind when you asked the question, but did I answer your question? Everybody does. Everybody does have different opinions about it. And uh, so um, sometimes I wonder, based upon things that are going on now, why we don't have more protests. Right behind you there is a Duke Law student. And standing back there in the far left is a Duke Law student. And there are law students um, everywhere. And what I want to say to them is that um, we need you. They, we need you to uh, take your place. And uh, you did not, uh, it's a privilege to be a lawyer. You pass the bar, it's a privilege to be able to go from, if it's, you take the bar in North Carolina, you can practice from Murphy to Manio, and you can do a lot of good. That's what uh, this book and this is what uh, Judge Chess, Chess's life, I think, represents most. And so um, I'd be disappointed if you don't, uh, set out to make a difference.